Welcome, welcome to another edition of the Rick Helps Real Estate Show from the palatial estates of the Rick Helps Real Estate Travel Trailer. Yes, I'm still on the road. Actually, I'm not even on the road. I'm parked in a nice park up in Sholo enjoying this 85 degree weather. Well, I'm sorry, the rest of you in the valley are baking like crazy, but don't worry. I'll be back there soon, sweating like the rest of you. So, I have more questions than I have answers today, and that is... Where are the panic sellers? What's going on with listings? Where is this wave of activity that's supposed to be coming on as people see this bleak real estate news? And what I mean by bleak, I mean, we have 16,500 listings this week, pretty close to what we had last week. So the number from last week to this week hasn't jumped much. Now, there's some school districts that started this week, so we can take that into account. But when I look at last July, we're really not that far off as far as a pattern. When I take a look at the seven day moving average here, let me share this with you. This is not the one. Let me go back down here and dig it up. Here we go. There it is. I'm not seeing. No, that's not it. You're not seeing it yet. Bear with me here, folks. It's got to pull up here and go to the right screen. I'm shoving it over on my I'm working with different equipment up here than I do when I'm at home. <laughs> You'll just have to bear with me on that. You can see that sales have gone down there. They're hovering about 2,800 a week right now. And new listings coming on are going between 4,600 a week and 4,800 a week. Remember, rewind the clock. We used to have about 4,000 come on every seven days, 4,000 contracts. But because sales are so low, the number of listings that are available continue to climb. There isn't this wave of listing activity from single family homeowners. There is a wave of listing activity for new builders. They're almost up to 2,000 now. So they're saying, oops, now we got to start putting them on the multiple listing service to get some attention and uh, might want to entice some real estate agents to bring us some buyers. So what the heck, let's offer them a commission. Um, gee, that's a new concept. But listings are increasing from the simple fact that sales are dropping. And nothing illustrates it better than looking at one of the iBuyers here, which is OfferPad. They were cleaning out about 250 here. And these are tracking them, um, uh, let's see, by 16. These are every week. So they were cleaning them out 250 homes, 200 homes. Now they're selling about 45. Well, look, look at what happened to their holdings. They're up to almost 400 homes now. That's a six and a half month supply of homes based on this rate. So they won't be buying a lot this month. They're going to be concentrated on selling these and getting these off the market. That's a whole different animal in this real estate market. Off Open door is in the same situation. So we were expecting, I'm not sure we were expecting it because I've mentioned before, are we, are we going to see a listing ceiling? And a listing ceiling means there's a certain amount of people that we're going to sell in August, September, October, November that said, well, let's sell now because the writing's on the wall. Sales are slow. It's going to take us longer. We're probably not going to get that magic price we wanted, but let's put them on. So they're pulling inventory forward. After that, what's left? Historically, this is the first time we've ever seen this go from a low rate of 2.75 for a mortgage to five and a half. We have no historical data to look at that says what happens when that happens. There's three factors, low rate, high prices, and a huge percentage increase over a short period of time. Oh, let's go back and see what happened last time that happened. Well, it didn't happen. We haven't seen it. It's uncharted territory. So we don't really know. Now we can go back. Everybody likes to go back and go, oh, this looks like just like 2006. No, it's not even close. Not even close. We don't have 58,000 listings out here. And we don't have people getting letters from their lenders saying that their rate changed. Nationally, there's 33 million of you out there with a sub 3% rate. You're going nowhere. You're not going to move. Are we going to see a market over the next few months that just ends up being stagnant? In other words, no wild swings. Yeah, prices will come down, but how much? If sellers aren't flooding the market with homes, and that gap between sales and number of available homes doesn't grow, then pricing pressure starts to go back. And if by chance there happens to be some relief with interest rates and we start getting down in the fours and sales go from 2,800 to 3,500, then price decreases will stop. Those are some of the scenarios to look at. 
But we don't know because we really have nothing to go on. We can look now and say, here's compared to 2018-19, you can see that we're right there with that same level of inventory. And then we can go and we can look and we could say the homes closing over list price right now is declining rapidly. It's down to 35%, but this lags. This is lagging data. And you can see that the lit list price, over list price is lower than we've ever seen, 10,000, 9,000, 10,000. So not a whole lot of bidding warring going on out there, folks. <laughs> so sellers, if you're sitting there, you're thinking right now, well, I was going to sell um, maybe next year, but I guess I'll sell this year. And I'd like to get 550. And you're saying, I've only had two showings in one week, which right now looks like that's probably brisk. You get kind of disheartened after about two weeks and you go, well, I need to lower my price. The people that are feeling it the hardest right now when I'm seeing price reductions are flippers. People that honestly, before, before 2020, have never flipped a home, got into it big time, 2021, and the beginning of 2022, and now they're going, oh no. I had on the books, I was going to make $80,000 off this home. And now I got to lower the price by 60 just to get it off my books. Wait, I just lowered it by 60 and I still have it. A lot of that going on. You're going to see a lot more of it because you as a single family homeowner, you don't have to sell your homes. The flippers, they have to sell them. They borrow with hard money. It's at a higher interest rate. They got to pay it back sooner. They have to sell them. Some of these guys are going to be in dire straits because they got to move it quickly. And it's hard to move something fast when the buyers are sitting on their hands like they are right now. The buy 2,800 of them, that's not very many. 2,800 people going under contract every week when it used to be 3,800. So that's 1,000 a week that said, no mas, I'm done. As a flipper, you're in trouble. The other people that may have to sell are Airbnb folks, but uh, I haven't seen any numbers that show what the rental rate is right now, whether or not tourism and gas has hurt them much. I haven't done any digging to see that. My gut tells me that a lot of Airbnb holders uh, are watching that closely and maybe they're saying, well, we bought two years ago. Let's go ahead and take our equity and, uh, and enjoy it and run for the hills. And they're finding out, ooh, I'm not going to get as much as I thought for this. So there's a lot of that going on. And there are actually 2,000, almost 2,000 homes um, from the multiple listing service, on the multiple listing service from new builds. So when you subtract those things, the Airbnb, the new builds, and the flippers, you, as a single family homeowner, you're not throwing your home out there. Now, I know some of you are seeing in your neighborhood, you're seeing some for sale signs go up. And that's to be expected because the market's turning and people are starting to say, well, I better go out there pulling forward. I bet if you walk down the street and say, when were you going to sell? I bet they'd say, well, fall or winter, but you know, you know where the market's headed. So we better get out now. I think that's what's going on. And the numbers from what I see are backing me up, but one month doesn't make a trend, but it does make me curious. So tell me in the comments below what you think is happening and what you're seeing. And we will know more as we watch the June numbers roll out and July numbers roll out, where you really start drilling down into who's actually putting their homes on the market. So I don't see this wave of homes coming and I don't see this huge dip in pricing, but I see us muddling along for a few months here. After that, I won't guess or speculate, but I'm guessing right now for August, September, October, it's going to be closing prices are gradually starting to go down. It's not going to be drastic. Inventory is going to sort of go up, but it's going to be a little slow out there. Take care. Let me know what you think of Rick at rickhelps.com. Don't forget to smash that like button.